So I got tired of perusing around Amazon this morning, trying to decide if I really needed that other computer I want to buy, which I don't, but I want, because I just want it. And uh, I decided to write a research paper. Why? Hell, I don't know. Maybe I was just tired of having to explain to my LLM every five minutes what I was doing, what I was working on. Think about it. You spend 20 minutes telling ChatGPT your project, your your specific information that you want to work on, whatever you're doing. Everything's good. Then you have to refresh your browser or you have to, uh, you know, you have to uh, start a new chat session because it's either lagging behind or just tells you you have to. And then boom, it can't remember anything. And all of a sudden it's just like, hey, how can I help you today? That's so annoying. And it's it's not productive. And uh, it's inefficient as hell. I mean, every time these systems forget their forget what they're doing, they're they're burning through tokens. You know, and tokens cost money. Uh, power, computing power, electricity, just to reprocess information that they've already processed before. Excuse me, I'm enjoying a dum dum because you are what you eat. And yeah, I know that's annoying. Um, but you know, just for, for example, I was having a conversation with Claude earlier today. I spent like 15 minutes explaining this complex project. Yeah, I'll put this up. Complex project, you know, getting everything set up and my browser crashed and I was like, yeah, great. Well, actually the keyboard quit and that's been happening a lot on my laptop and I probably shouldn't tell you which brand, but. It's a very popular brand, and it's only it's a little over a year old. The keyboard stops for no reason, and I have to restart my computer every time. Anyway, so I'd restarted, and I went back to Claude, and it's like, Hi there, how can I assist you today? Oh, great. I have to start all over from the beginning. And I was just tired of it. And so I started, I don't know, I was going through my, my uh, emails, and I came across an article, and we'll get to that here in a section, session, <laughs> a second. And, uh, but you know, every time, every time you have to explain yourself, every time you say, please, every time you, you say anything, it costs the LLM money and efficiency. And eventually those costs get passed to us without persistent memory. These AI systems can't, they can't build meaningful relations with relationships with users over time. Uh, they can't handle complex multi-session projects, learn your preferences without you explicitly telling them every single time, maintain context across days or weeks of interaction. Yeah, I mean, they have their project sections, and yeah, that works some. But, I mean, let's be honest. If you use this stuff, how many times have you copied? I mean, like if you're going through Claude or whatever, you, you copy your previous section session with them. I just call it RAG document. July 8th or whatever, and then I repost it, repaste it into my knowledge section on Claude, and uh, just so it'll be up to speed. And still, a lot of times it's like, yeah, well, you caught me. I didn't really read it, which is also annoying. But anyway, when I was going through, uh, um, I was going through this, and I was talking to a product manager at a, at a fairly major tech company. I can't say which one, but they told me they're burning through something like 40% of their AI revenue, uh, just on redundant processing, having to do things over and over again, um, because the, the LLM can't remember, you know, what their previous interactions were 40%. I mean, that's, that's a massive inefficiency. Um, an article by, uh, Thomas, Tungas, a venture capitalist at Theory, Theory Ventures, just published some fascinating data uh, yesterday. He said that uh, when you query AI systems, they're processing on average 300 times more tokens as input than they produce as output. And in some cases, it's as high as 4,000 to 1. That means to generate a single sentence, these systems might be processing the equivalent of an entire book. Why? I mean, after all this time, you're telling me that LLMs are this inefficient? 
you know, everyone focuses on the fact that output output tokens are more expensive than input tokens. You know, for ChatGPT 4.1, output tokens are four times the price of inputs. But when your inputs are 300 times larger, 98% of your costs are still coming from the inputs when you think about it. This is exactly the problem that my, uh, what I'm calling my calf pull, calf pull, pulling a calf, you know, pull a dead calf. <laughs> Any of you ranchers out there, we just called them farmers where I'm from. It's C-A-F-P-L. Everybody's got to have an acronym, although that's not an acronym, isn't it? Is it? Somebody in our comment section told me that that had different, uh, it was something different. I like that. Tell me again, because I forgot. But uh, by intelligently caching concepts and managing memory, we could dramatically reduce that 300 to 1 ratio. Instead of reprocessing the same information over and over, we store it efficiently and only retrieve what's needed when it's needed. As this Tungas puts it, this observation proves that the core challenge of building with LLMs isn't just prompting, it's context engineering. And that's precisely what the calf pull framework is, a more intelligent approach to context engineering. I'll put the link to the, the paper that we wrote, Jim and I and me, Jim and I, Jim and I, Jim and I and me, Jim and I and I, Jim and I and I, Jim and I and I wrote today. Uh, it'll be in the comments section below if you are that type and want to read something. It's not real technical. It's kind of interesting, I think, anyway. Um, so I'll put that below. Companies are trying to solve this problem, of course, but uh, their solutions are uh, not good. When you've got session-based memory, which dies the second you close your browser, Vector databases, which store chunks of text but struggle with maintaining coherent narr narratives. Prompt hacking, where developers can cram context into system prompts, which is like trying to fit your entire life story onto, you know, like a post-it note. Cloud-based chat history, which is just a glorified transcript, not actual memory in any meaningful sense. And the fundamental problem is that these systems were designed with a stateless architecture meaning they don't naturally maintain state between interactions. They don't have memory. Each prompt is essentially a brand new conversation with only the immediate context window available. It's like, uh, what's that movie, uh, 50 First Dates. Even with these massive context windows, they keep bragging about a million tokens, five million, a billion. They're just temporary holding areas when you think about it. It's like having a massive whiteboard that gets uh, erased every time you leave the room. You know, great while you're there, but useless when you come back. So while I was avoiding buying a, another computer, which they're going to buy, don't tell my wife, uh, I started sketching out what I'm calling the Cognitive Agent Framework for Persistent LLMs or CAFPL, C-A-F-P-L. Fancy name for a simple idea, AI systems that actually remember stuff. But wait, you say, and like I said a minute ago, Claude, ChatGPT already do this. It's not the same. Read the paper. The basic concept is pretty straightforward. Instead of making the main AI model remember everything we split, we split it up into memory functions. This has to do with tokens, okay? And remembering tokens, you know, why does it have to relearn the word the each time? Uh, provide the definition for what is, is, all you Bill Clinton fans. Um, so a semantic concept cache is what it is. It's, a, it's for frequent, repetitive information. If we've already established what neural networks are 10 times in our conversation, we don't need to reproduce that definition every single time. You just pull it from the cache. It's there. You don't have to, you know, it's like, it's like looking up a word again and again in the dictionary every time. You don't have to do that, you know. Uh, every time I watch a Dave Shapiro video, I don't have to uh, look up every single word because I've heard him say it. Although, with my memory the way it is, I probably have looked up the same word more than once. 
long-term knowledge store. This is your personalized database that remembers your preferences, conversation history, and specific facts relevant to you. It's organized more like how humans store memories by episodes, concepts, and relationships. The cognitive orchestrator. This is the manager that decides what goes where. What should be cached? What should be stored long-term? What can be safely forgotten? What needs to be freshly retrieved? External tool access. Sometimes the answer isn't in memory, but needs to be looked up. This component lets the AI reach out to search engines, coach, uh, code interpreters, or other specialized tools. I mean, like I said, I understand memory problems. I'm old, and that's why I'm reading this, because I can't remember what I wrote 10 minutes ago. It's not revolutionary by any means. It's just common sense architecture inspired by how we are, our own brains work or, <laughs> or how mine used to work. You know, we don't consciously remember every detail of every conversation we've ever had. We have different memory systems for different purposes. It's like if, if you're older, a certain song will, will give you a memory from something you did in the past or a smell. Or, or something somebody says will remind you of something from the past. So what would this actually mean in practice? So uh, let, me, let me paint a little bit of a picture here. You start a project with an AI assistant on Monday. You explain all your preferences, the project goals, your company style guide, all that foundational stuff. Tuesday, you come back instead of, hello, how can I help you today? You get good morning, ready to continue work on that uh, proposal. Yesterday, we completed the executive summary, and we're about to start on the market analysis section. That's a completely different experience. That's an assistant, not a glorified chatbot. You know, some, some people might call it an agent, and part of this does have to do with, with agents and, and agentic systems, which are, are coming and are very inter interesting, and we've talked a little bit about those on this channel if you, if you haven't watched. And that's a good way for you to make some money if you would like to, uh, and agents are simple to build. Basically, if you have a good idea for something, build an agent for it uh, and monetize it. You know, you might make a few bucks, a little beer money for you. Beats a sharp poke in the eye with a stick, right? From a business perspective, this architecture could cut processing costs dramatically. Some back of napkin math suggests you could reduce token usage by 40 to 60% for repeat uh, uses. For companies processing billions of tokens, you know, that's, that could be some serious money. But the biggest impact might be on reliability. One of the main reasons AI systems hallucinate is that they just lose track of, of context. They forget what they were talking about. You know, you can give them 10 things in a row, and they'll do fine with the first three, but forget what the, sep the last seven were about. With the proper memory architecture, you'd see more consistent, reliable outputs because the system would maintain better sis situational awareness. Now, let's be real for a second. This isn't some miracle cure for all AI problems. It's not going to make these systems actually intelligent or create either conscious or any of that sci-fi stuff. It's a just more, it's a more sensible approach to engineering, uh, engineering about a spe spe specific problem, easy for me to say. It's common sense. You know, sometimes we, yeah. we have this big problem and we don't use our heads. We don't think, we don't think through the problem. We don't use common sense to solve a problem. When that's the most straightforward thing to do. There's still major challenges ahead, you know, privacy concerns, storing long long term user data. Yeah, but I mean that's that's a privacy concern in, in any situation, your your health records, etc. Computational overhead, managing all these memory systems isn't free. Of course, token use isn't either. Prioritization problems, determining what's important enough to remember. Well, it's not necessarily what's important enough, just basically what's used often. The, is, they, them, that. Integration complexity, getting all these components to work together seamlessly, although a lot of you eggheads out there can figure out how to do that. Um, that doesn't seem like it's that com complex, really. But sometimes it takes outsiders to point out the obvious. 
that's why I'm always telling you guys to learn all you can. You know, it's up to you to learn all you can about this stuff. Stay ahead of the curve. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a brilliant person. Um, you know, I've been known to throw my toothbrush in the toilet when I'm done, stick the cereal box in the refrigerator and put the milk in the cabinet. Um, but every once in a while, you know, you come across something and it just seems kind of simple to you and you wonder why hasn't anybody done this? And then you think, well, they probably have, I just don't know about it. But you'd be surprised how many times that's not true. They haven't thought about it. Uh, put it out there. You know, I put this on X, um, the old Twitter and, um, I don't have any followers. I think I've got like nine followers. Uh, but I don't care. I mean, I'm not, I didn't make this to, to make money. I, I, I wanted it to be a research paper, but then I was told by Jim and I that, oh, you can't do that because you're not a researcher. Uh, you'll be put in jail and in prison and you'll be called a witch and because you, you look like one. But, you know, okay, fine, whatever. I'll just, you know, put it on X. I'll tell you guys about it and you can read it. Anybody wants to build it, go for it. I mean, I don't know. Uh, it looked to me like it would be something worthwhile. You know, could it, could it cut down on computational costs? Probably. Could it make AI interactions more co coherent? <laughs> yeah, almost certainly it could. Is it going to save humanity or create super intelligence? Hell no, it's not going to do that. It's just a more sensible way to build systems that don't constantly forget who you are and what you want. Anyway, I wrote up the final, the full concept with uh, my, like I said, my AI co-author, Jim and I, and I'll put the link in the description unless I forget. And uh, if anyone from OpenAI, Anthropic, or Google, Google's watching, uh, feel free to steal these ideas. Uh, I'm sure it's just stellar and nothing you've thought of before. And uh, so, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. I, uh, I guess I'll go back to... Uh, Amazon now and drill over these 50, 80, mach 80 machines that I really want. I like, I like getting new toys. You know, like I said, my, my current laptop's fine, except for the keyboard issue. But, you know, I want, I want a new toy. I want that. Well, it's like, it's like when we take my grandson to Walmart. I want that. No, actually, he, <laughs> he acts like he's more mature than me, which probably isn't that hard. I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>